Hello guys, this is Damdog82. Uh, finally going to be finishing up this Dreadnought today, hopefully. So, uh, basically she is finished for the most part, but uh, we still need to do a couple of things. Uh, first, the, probably the biggest and most important thing that we need to do is make sure that we have the firing restrictions on this correctly set up. So when I do firing restrictions, I usually like to have a very, very large... Um, marker display. It's really, really hard to see otherwise. I think I can safely do 150 on these. Yeah. It, but uh, one of the problems with shipbuilding, though, is uh, you, especially when you have turrets in this kind of position, it's really hard to see where they're going to go. I mean, with the lines, but yeah. Uh, we're just gonna copy and paste these settings to each of these, I believe. So, we'll just take this one next. We'll shrink the blocks. There we go. And we'll just paste. I don't know if I could get the same to work over here. We can try, though. This is normally stuff that I do off camera because it can be extremely tedious. We're probably going to want to flip these because they're on the back side of the ship. Uh, 50 degrees, that actually seems alright. And we'll just copy that to the clipboard. I just wonder what the hell this air pocket was here for. <laughs> no, that makes sense now. Uh, let's just go ahead and put an air pump in here. Help with that. Wait, I can't do that because I'm building on the turrets. Okay, let's try this again. Uh, I might end up reusing this hole here, at the very least, for a, a German ship. I'm not entirely sure. I don't like making stuff that's like single use, usually, because... I mean, why? What's the point? I mean, if I if I could get more out of it, then the time that I put into it, I'm all for it. Okay, just want to make sure those all had air pumps. Uh, okay, so we got the firing restrictions for the main guns done. Uh, let's do these anti-aircraft guns. Oh, that reminds me. Um, there was one set of anti-aircraft guns that I kind of fudged. Actually, uh, I, I fudged them all, but um, it looks like this one here has all the correct settings. Uh, let me just shrink the block so I can show you guys what I'm talking about. So, I didn't have enough coolings, and uh, they, these were kind of underperforming. You guys see, the cooling limit is uh, 331. I went and uh, modified it with this one, and uh, it, yeah, it, it's just better all run. So we're just basically going to rip out all of those AA guns and replace them with uh, this variant right here. Uh, I just uh, replaced some of the autoloaders with coolers. wasn't too big a deal. Yeah, so we're all good there. Make sure I have the right one selected before I make a prefab of it. There we go. Alright, so now we gotta pop the rest of them off. Just makes it easier to see if we're in this setup here. And we can take them out two at a time. I uh, don't necessarily need to do that here. There. Alright, so let's bring this back up. It seems like it's in the right position. And we'll need to bring all the blocks back so we can see where this goes. Fortunately, it's a 3x3, three three, and it's kind of easy to tell. There we go. Now 
looks like a kind of... Yeah. Okay, I can fix that real quick. With the decking, um, I forgot to put a block here, but that's no big deal. I might have forgot. Yep, I did it on that side as well. No problem. Okay, so let's go back to the sub-objects, and we will plop this guy down in here. There we go. There. Now let's set up the firing restrictions for the AA guns. Now that we have those all set correctly. Ah, that looks good. Let's just go like so. go. Being able to flip things over the axes makes it so much easier nowadays. Because like I was saying, this, this can get very uh, boring. Yeah, that, that's probably the safest way to describe it. <laughs> uh, okay, let's do these bofers here. These are actually fairly simple to do. And we'll just make that an even 20 degrees. We'll copy it. And we'll put it on this guy. We'll do a flip X. And we'll flip the constraints. There we go. And let's do the same up here. Paste. Flip X. Flip... No, I think, yeah, flipping Z. That's what we needed. And we need to flip the constraints. We'll do the same over here. Uh, flip Z. Flip the constraints back. Good. And we got these little darlings up here. I think they'll be okay if we just do something like this. I'll just flip the Z on that. There we go. Now those are all done. Uh, Casemate guns, they could be a bit more of a pain in the ass, but thankfully since we have that copy and paste going on there, it makes things a lot easier. I guess I really didn't need to do that. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and enable the constraints. I think right about there would be good. We'll flip that around. And we'll copy it. And we'll paste it on its counterpart over here. Okay. And we need to flip X. Perfect. Alright, let's do this guy next. Actually, I think I need to go back to those other ones and fix them, but that's okay. Yep. We'll do that here in a moment. I think I did something wrong. Ah, 15 degrees. Yeah, that looks fine. And this guy here will do 140. Yeah. Alright, copy clipboard. So when I use these casemate guns, uh, I usually like to use frag in them. Uh, mostly because if you use frag in anything that's going to be storing a lot of shells, uh, it will blow through heavy armor in a lot of cases, so it's just something I try to avoid. Because we need to flip the... There we go. 
Uh, let's double check. Yeah, that's that needs to be changed up a bit. Okay. Let's see here. Yeah, that'll work. All right, and we need to flip the constraints. There we go. All right. Uh, we still got a little bit of decorative work to do. We'll try uh, doing that in this episode as well, if I got the time. Uh, depending on how long this goes, I might just chop it up into two. Uh, flip X constraints. There we go. All right. Let's set up these. That's okay. And those can shoot straight forward because there's nothing blocking them. Okay, we'll just copy that to the clipboard and we can do that on this. And we will do that over here. Yep, that looks good. I'll copy that. Paste it to this dude here. There we go. A lot of times, though, with these casemates, um, setting up the restrictions on it can be a little redundant. Um, because the failsafes usually seem to do a pretty good job of uh, keeping them from shooting at things that they're not supposed to be shooting at. But it's not something that you can 100% trust. Uh, there's honestly a point back in the day where I wasn't even bothered using the failsafes. I figured I could save myself some volume and block out materials just by not using them and just by setting up firing restrictions. You could still do that. Um, it may not necessarily be recommended because uh, the settings in the... What is that? The um, failsafes, they have improved since then. But just something to think about. Uh, let's flip X. There we go. Alright, we got all of our constraints done. So, I think I want to try to see if we can do a little bit of decorative work here. Let's go with some railings, I think. Drop a mirror line real quick. Wrong way. There we go. I'm getting this to work near the bofers. I think that's potentially going to be a problem, but I think we can work around it. Oops. Well, that's a potential problem. Will you let me place it there? It looks like you will. Awesome. And this needs to be, what, a three meter? I can place that, and we can place one of these. Actually, I think this could use a, a ladder and some railings here. Yeah. There we go. There we go. I'm wondering if we can put some more railings up there. I'm not entirely sure because I think that a little bit up there might cause us some issues. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be a problem. It's still going to be a problem. Okay, we'll do it that way. Actually, I could probably live with that, because... Yeah, you know, they would need a way to turn, and they would probably block people from falling off anyway, so yeah, I could live with that. Um, this up here... 
I'm not entirely sure what to do with this. Uh, I'm kind of worried to put something there because I'm afraid that it might be in the way of the that front main gun there. So I think I'm just going to do something like that. There we go. I think that's looking pretty good. Uh, Yeah, that's fine. I can live with that. Alright, so this next part here, we're going to be doing some decoration work. Now, I really, really hate how this comes out in like a bunch of these bridges like this. It drives me crazy, so I'm going to show you guys how I hide them. I'm going to grab this metal slope. Usually just go with the same length of the slope that you're working with. Uh, we're going to roll that guy on its side. I think it's 90 like that. Yep. Okay. Then we're going to move it like so. And do the up and down scaling. Point zero to 1. I think I fudged. I think it's the left and right one I'm looking for. Yeah. There we go. And we're going to copy all. And apply with mirror. And we're going to do the same here. And we just keep on going back like this. Now when we get to a different size, I'll show you what we do when we get there that. You know, ideally, you kind of want to try to get these all as they're going uh, in one direction and then just do the other side. I find that's the quickest way to go about doing it. So when you get to a different size, you just look for the next size slope up, which in this case would be a 3. And we'll just copy all, apply with mirror, paste all, apply with mirror, and just rinse and repeat like so. And here we'll just do the same thing, but we'll be using a one meter slope. And we'll do the same here. I think we want to do that here too. And I'll do it here, just because that's a weird angle. Yeah. It's fine. Uh, paste all there, but this time we, I think we need a 4 meter. Yep, that seems to work. And we'll apply with a mirror. Did I copy that? Yeah, we'll paste all. Apply with the mirror. So while I'm doing this, I'm thinking for the next Dominion Adama project I want to do is probably going to be a battle cruiser, like a super battle cruiser for um K 
Kingdom of Windsor. At least that's what I'm thinking. No, I think I could live with that, because when I go to paint it, it'll be really hard to tell. Uh, let's see. A new decoration will go with... No, 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 wait. Delete. Paste all. There we go. Uh, actually, that just might be easier to do with the 3 meter. Yeah. And we'll... Here we go. I... No, 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 I did that. Delete. Paste all. I keep forgetting that I got the settings that I want under that. Um... Actually, I think I, I like that. I think I'll leave it. Yeah. I don't think it needs it there. Uh, here we can definitely do it. There we go. So now that we're at the other end of the ship, we'll start going forward. So we'll come all the way here to the back. Uh -huh. And we will yaw this over here. We'll switch it to a one meter slope. Uh, has a look at zero degrees. Not bad. Okay. Forward, backward. I'll move that up. Ah, copy all. Play. Paste. Apply. Paste. Apply. Actually, I probably need to be using a 2 meter slope for this. There we go. Apply. Anyway, uh, going back to the battle cruiser I was telling you guys about uh, for Windsor. Uh, I had this idea of having, like, um, top secret uh, boss units, and I think that would make a pretty cool one for Windsor, mostly because, well, British are pretty much known for doing uh, battle cruisers, so, yeah. That wasn't quite right. There, let's try it here then. Yes. I already got the guns made for it. Um,. They are 500 millimeter by 6 meter. And they give no fucks about armor. Um, I have seen these shells go straight through 5 meters of metal. <laughs> They're pretty nasty. Uh, okay. And we'll change that up to 3 because I think yeah, the slope went up. So we'll apply and copy that. And I'm thinking for, well, Lokari, one of the guys that I do a lot of YouTube stuff with, uh, he is wanting to make something of a Tillman battleship for the American faction, the, um, what's it called? The Republic of Free States, I believe is what I called it. Yeah. And Germany is going to be getting one, too. That's going to be the air battle ship that uh, me, Ion, and Heitzmeister and Lokari Law worked on. Um, that's the plan, anyway. I want to make sure that, yeah, we're good. All right. Paste all. Uh, I'm not entirely sure when we're going to get around to finishing that airship, though. But, um, I think I just might do it myself. Whether or not I do it on camera, I'm still debating that. If you guys didn't really want to see that, you know, let me know in the comments. Uh, 
But the only thing it really needs is uh, just to have the uh, upper gas bag put on it. And yeah, it would just it'd just be like a lot of tedious uh, block work, so yeah. Probably not going to be all that interesting, but if people genuinely want to see me do it, I will do it. Okay, so this bit up here, let's go ahead and get these. I think I want two meters. Apply. And we'll just go with a brand new one here. Because these ones are going to be a little bit weird. Uh, let's go negative 90 on that. There we go. Yeah, that into position. Don't mind that sound in the background. That just means one of my 7 days to die videos is done. Hope you guys have been enjoying those. It's actually a very fun game. I highly recommend it. And we'll do one of these up here. Except we'll do it with a two meter slope. You gotta play with the mirror. Yeah, you put some paint on that, no one will ever know that that was out. Uh, the um, metal texture. Unless you're like really, really close to it. That's something that kind of drives me nuts about some of the people that play from the depths is a lot of them look for perfection. And to me, that's not what from the depths is about. It's about blowing shit up. You know, kind of takes the fun out of it if you spend all your time just min-maxing everything. Yeah, I, I am not a min-maxer. I am not trying to dissuade anyone who does min-maxing. It's just not for me. Just does not work for me. Okay, uh, looks like we got all of those bits. I think I want to do some work around these casemates, maybe. Yeah, let's see what we can come up with. Uh, left and right positioning. That's good. Yeah, I can work with that. Okay. Uh, we'll just rotate this one into position here. Uh, I think we need to go with a 90 degree on that. Uh, there we go. Apply. Copy all. And I think I'll... Eh. Move that guy back. We'll apply that with a mirror. I think I'll rip that block out and I will put like a metal three meter beam there instead. And we'll switch this up with a three meter. Make it look all nice. I think we want a two meter for this. Uh, flip this back around. Uh, yacht like so. Left and right, you can put that there. Good. Uh, we'll apply the mirror with that. But the, yeah, the kind of the people that min max stuff, I just, I don't know, it just feels like it sucks the joy out of it for me. And that's just not what I'm about. If you do that, that's completely fine. It's just not for me. Uh, what size do I want gears on that? Actually, let's just replace that with that and paste all. Perfect.
Yeah, we'll just rip those out and put some two meter beams here. And we got that guy all the way around. Flip to negative 90 and apply. Alright, that looks pretty good, I think. It's kind of a sharp edge, but I can live with it. Okay. So, uh, I'm gonna drop a save on this guy here real quick. But, uh, I'm going to put it in the, uh, this version of it into Dominion of Dama. And I'll just save it as, um, the YouTube drive nut in there. Um, now I think I want to try to paint this guy. And the quickest way that you can paint these is, well, let's see here. We need to switch to our spray paint tool. I have it set on number six on my hotbar here. Uh, I said I was going to paint this guy in my own fleet colors, so we'll just go ahead and start on that. So let's see here. Go with, yeah, that'll work. Now with the spray paint, it doesn't matter if you are building on their art. You can just pop. Of course, you can't really mirror that, but uh, that's one of the drawbacks of it, of course. But if you're doing like a large area and you're wanting to do it kind of cool, it's a pretty good way to go about doing it. So I'm just trying to decide what kind of ship I want to use this for in Dominion of Dama. I'm really thinking she fits the bill for a German ship. I think that would work just fine for it. Thing is, is I already got a German um, Dreadnought and Super Dreadnought, but I'm wondering if I can make one of those a battle cruiser instead. Possibly. We'll think about it. Okay, so now let's. Uh, no, I got the wrong paint selected. There we go. Haha. And you just kind of. Well, it's almost like painting an MS Paint. You just kind of hold down the button and wave the mouse around. Keep in mind that this paints individual blocks. Uh, it will not paint any decorations for you. That you'll have to go into the decoration UI and do that. Uh, I'll show you guys how to do that here in a little bit after. Uh, actually, I'm wondering if it just might be easier for me to just do this all the time lapse. You guys kind of got the idea how I do this, so. But again, you wouldn't get to hear me talk. I'll leave that for editing Dama to sort through for you guys. Because right now we're just recording Dama. Editing Dama, though, he can be a bit of a bastard. It's always pretty cool, though. There we go. See how fast that gets painted? For doing really detailed stuff, it's probably better to do it with uh, the um, in-build mode. But uh, for big areas like this, it works pretty well. I really like how the hole for this turned out. I still got a French destroyer that I did a stream of for you guys that uh, needs to be finished. Oh, it looks like uh, I got some decoration work done here to do too. We'll take care of that here in a moment. Oh, and the other thing that's cool about this is um, it doesn't care whether you're on sub-objects or not. Just kind of 
whatever. And sometimes you'll accidentally paint your propulsion red, but that's okay. We will use um, some other things to try to make that look a little bit better here later on. But yeah, those propellers are ginormous and they're going to be a pain to get around. Actually, I think I just may go ahead and do the decorative work down here real quick so you guys can see how I do it. If you've been following my channel for a while now, you've probably seen me do enough of these and the time lapses to know how I do them, but usually you see that kind of shit going on in like four times speed. So let's just go ahead and paint this stuff. Uh, let's take a little bit of the green out of that. I want to make it look like these are like, I don't, I don't know if they make them out of bronze or brass. I'm assuming bronze. Try to help with corrosion, I would guess. I did not want to paint that. There we go. That looks much better in the, that kind of orange color, doesn't it? Okay, so we need to put in a decoration here, so. Metal triangle corner. Let's try the left one first. Yeah, that, that looks like it'll do. Uh, let's get that going 90 degrees, like so. Uh, roll it. Yeah, negative 90. There we go. Alright, so this right here just kind of houses our small rudder. It's supposed to work in concert with these larger ones. So let's add a new decoration. We want the metal slope one meter. Yeah, that around. Pitch it and let's go. Nope, 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 that's not what I wanted. I wanted up and down scaling, set that to two. Set that to two. Forward backward positioning. Seems like I brought the wrong red. There we go. I think, it, yeah, that looks good. Up, 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 up. There we go. And now you'd never know it was there unless I told you. So let's get back to painting like we were here. I think this thing needs a name too. I mean, I'll, for when it goes up on the workshop for you guys, I'll probably still leave it as YouTube Dreadnought. But uh, for Dominion Dam, it's going to need a name. I'm sure I'll come up with one at some point. Lately here, I've been getting a lot of ideas from a German band called Accept. Oddly enough, they really, really remind me of ACDC. But they've been around for like a long time. Well, so is ACDC. But yeah. Give them a lesson sometimes. I think you might enjoy them. Uh, if you ever heard Balls to the Walls, that was them. There we go. It would never be said that Damon does not have an artistic side to him. 
I actually played needed a budget of Space Marines and Imperial Guard back in the day. Before I found From the Depths. From the Depths is a lot less expensive, needless to say. Here we go. I uh, hope I didn't paint that. Okay, good, I didn't. I also highly recommend when you are painting this, uh, make sure that the, um, your camera is attached to the ship itself. So then that way, if you have like the AI turned on and it's you're trying to paint it as it's sailing away from you, yeah, that's a huge pain in the ass. I'm actually kind of glad that this thing wasn't going to need any um, PID fuckery. I don't know if the rest of y'all be as lucky when you try to go build your own dreadnoughts. I know that PID screen can be very intimidating for a lot of people. It actually took me a few years before I finally gave in and just decided I was going to learn it come hell or high water. What you do there in PID, it's like from the depths becomes an entirely different game for you. And I think we got the bottom of the hole painted. That's awesome. Now let's get this top bit. See what I mean about it kind of bobbing up and down there? Yeah, that kind of makes it harder to paint. And I would have uh, went ahead and selected the right color for these, but uh, like I said, I was uh, making a separate one or a separate file for Dominion of Dama. It's going to have like a different paint scheme. But basically, the process is the same. You just uh, go over those, change them one at a time to uh, whatever color you want, rinse and repeat. I think I also need to paint these uh, mantlets that I got for the main guns. I've seen some people come up with some very, very fancy mantlets, but I I just don't have, I don't have the kind of patience to, to do that kind of work, so that's kind of why I go with the big spheres. And I think they still come out looking pretty good in the end. But if you want to put a little extra work into it, that's completely fine as well. Just It just seems like it's a lot more work than it's worth to me. And that's just an opinion. I'm going to have to come back and fix that, but that's not too big a deal. go. I'm make sure I didn't go over that black line. Any. I just kind of use the black line to uh, as a transition between the uh, upper fleet color and the bottom. Just to kind of make it look nice. Uh, usually uh, I go with like the water line to decide on where to put that. Takes a bit of a steady hand to do that, especially with it bobbing up and down like this. As you just saw there, this feature has a bit of a limited range on it. Also, if you go real fast with it, it can kind of mess up things.
All right, we got the lower part of the ship painted. Like I said, we'll come back and fix those later. Uh, let's do some turret work. Now these can be a little tricky to do because yeah, you you got to go like right underneath those barrels. And I just accidentally painted one. Bound to happen. We can come back and fix that later. It's not too big a deal. And there is some mimics in the... I mean, not mimics, but decorations in these from uh, when we were trying to hide the detection systems in this. So yeah, we'll have to fix that. There we go. Uh, something that you could potentially do to try to make this less work on you is you could just uh, cut off all the turret caps and just copy and paste this onto the rest of them. Now let's just fix up our little boo-boo there. Good. Make sure that's painted. There we go. Okay, that's a quick fix, though. There we go. Actually, while we're in here, let's just go ahead and... You see, unless you, like, got really close, you would never know that that was a completely different texture. Right, let's just go ahead and get all this... Since we're working very, very close to the uh, deck there, it's probably better to do it this way from this part, because it's it's a little bit more precise to do it in a uh, build mode than it is with just the paint of the uh, I'm sorry the spray can. side of it is is that I can't do turret caps in build mode unless I am building on the turret directly. Uh, let's do the superstructure. But yeah, you can kind of see how this goes a little bit more slower, but that's probably why it uh, makes it easier to get the better detail painting this way. leave all the railings the same color. Get a little bit of contrast. It looks like I missed a bit up there, so... Fine. Actually, where did I pick that up at? Was that the... Okay. That I think I want a three. And let's make them all the same color and apply with mirror. some uh, trickery with the mirror land to make sure that it's all applying correctly. 
some people may not know this, but uh, you can make the near line appear between two uh, blocks. So that can come in kind of handy sometimes if you're building something that's even blocked, which you don't really see a whole lot of, which I can understand because that kind of goes against like every thing in From the Depths, and it's all built on an odd number of blocks. And let's get these portals painted. And we got a lot of our sensors. I went and accidentally painted a ladder, but we can go back and fix that later. That's kind of one of the things that's a bit of a pain about using the spray can. And that is... If you have a decoration sitting in front of the block you want to paint, it'll only paint the decoration. It will not paint the block behind it. So something for you guys to be aware of if you're using the spray can. that. Because remember, we uh, were using a decoration to hide these sensors inside the, um, the funnels. If you're creative with decorations, you can hide pretty much damn near anything. And that is a fact. That looks like, no, actually, that's fine. I can look at that. Uh, something that you should also be aware of when you're painting stuff like this. Um, you might want to check to make sure that when your turrets move around that uh, they don't accidentally expose an area that hasn't been painted. It's kind of hard to make sure that you got everything done. Let's just go ahead and get that colored correctly.
There we go. Oh, there's a bit we missed. Okay, so let's correct this bit over here. I think I might have just got a little too happy with the paint can, or the spray can. That's not what I meant to do. But yeah, this shit can get kind of tedious. This is usually why I do this kind of thing off camera when I do the builds for you guys. I know there's some people that won't bother with this, but having those jagged edges around there just drives me crazy. And I think this gives it a nice, soft, clean look. I didn't delete anything important. I think I accidentally hit Control Z. Yep. Okay, it wasn't anything too bad. This guy here too. There we go. I get these little bits here. Get a little close to the end here. Yeah, that's looking great. I believe that these here. Yeah, there they are. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay.
Oh, I went and accidentally painted the... Yep. We'll fix it. Remember what I was seeing about the decorations? Yeah. Kind of what happened there. I want those just in straight black. That's good. So, you know, guys, if uh, you took this ship here, um, gave it some really good anti aircraft missiles, some really good EMP protection, uh, you could probably fit a few LAM systems in this. And have the engine room for them. This would be a pretty decent ship, I think, for Quest for Neater. I mean, the guns alone are pretty strong, as you saw in the first episode. And we'll apply a mirror to that. I forgot to paint those offers up there, but that's fine. We can get that here for a while. Whoops. Got a little too happy with it. There we go. Lots of deck on this boy. It's not exactly Orcs but Dream deck, but it's still a lot of deck. That's better. Well, let's change that to black. Play with the mirror. Very good. Looks like I forgot to do the decorations on those other guns, but that's fine, we can come back to those. That's gonna drive me crazy. Uh, what gun? Okay. We've done that guy. We still need to do this one. Change this over to black. Yeah, that looks good. Put 
to see if we got all of those. Yep, looks like it. Good. Now... Let's paint these the correct color. Now that doesn't look dark enough. Yeah, I thought so. And I missed some up here. That's no big deal. We can get that right now. What are the... Okay, first thing there, I thought those might have been decorations. And I think there are a couple of decorations up here. Yep. She's looking good. Uh, this needs to be painted still. Sometimes I don't forget to paint those completely, but yeah. Not too bad a price for something this big. Alright guys, I think she is finished. Aesthetically and functionally finished. So I... I think I'm just going to go ahead and wrap up the video here. So um, I'd like to thank you all for watching. Uh, if you like what you saw today, please let me know with a like, comment, or even better, subscription. Uh, have yourself a hell of a day, and keep your armor high. Later.